See that really creamy, you know, creamy and tender risotto here. Here we are. You know, when I do risotto, there's never enough olive oil or cheese in it. So, you know, at the end, just a little soupçon and a little bit of extra cheese. Always welcome. This is a great dish, and I'm going to show you how to make it. Begin by chopping half an onion. Add a little oil to the hot pan, then the onion, and saute for about a minute, stirring. I like to choose Italian aborio rice for this risotto. Add it to the pan and stir it well to coat each grain with oil. Add about half of the hot stock. Season with salt and freshly ground black pepper. Lower the heat, cover, and let cook stirring occasionally until the stock has been absorbed. Chop a piece of fennel and add it, along with another half a cup of stock. And while it's cooking, peel and chop a red bell pepper. Chop the mushroom, cut the asparagus into one inch piece. They can be cut ahead and combined along with the peas. Add them and cook covered for another five minutes. When all the stock has been absorbed and the rice is tender, remove the risotto from the heat and stir in a couple of tablespoons of butter and some Parmesan cheese to make a wonderful risotto with vegetables. Mm. Delicious. I'm using a lot of grain, potato, pasta today. From easy to elegant. This is essential pepin. Essential pepin is made possible by KitchenAid for the way it's made. Proudly celebrating 10 years of Cook for the Cure to support the fight against breast cancer. And by C. Donatello Winery. Producing Pinot Noir and Chardonnay from Sonoma's Russian River Valley. C. Donatello Winery is a proud supporter of Jacques Pepin. And by OXO Good Grips. OXO, tools you hold on to. Make sure when you peel potato that you don't have any eye, black eye here to go around. Both are great peelers, so it works good with it. We are going to do darfin potato, which is a kind of shredded potato sauté into a pancake, a skillet, a sweet potato, a green couscous, and a corn polenta with a mushroom ragu today. So let's get to work. I'm going to start by shredding this. This can be shredded with those. Gotta watch your knuckle here when you use this. And of course you do it on the thick, no part of it, not on this part. Uh, if of course you have one of those wonderful machines, you put them in and just put the potato right there. I wash this one. That's it. We have a little piece of potato left here. Well, we have enough. Here is my potato. What you want to do is take a little bit of the liquid out of it. You see. Okay. More. So this is where I'm coming in France, we call that pomme paillasson. A paillasson is a doormat because uh, we make it into a, a kind of flat thing, like a doormat. And in Lyon, we call it pomme paillasson. In Switzerland, they call it uh, rusty potato. Here I put some salt on it, a bit of scallion. Sometimes you do those potatoes with 
cooked potato as well, you know. It's a different texture, different taste too. And even a little bit of pepper. So I have all my seasoning here. And of course, you can do it in a larger skillet, thinner, shorter skillet, thicker, question of taste. I have a very hot skillet here. This is a little bit of vegetable oil. I'll put some butter at the end. Make that in there. Okay. Maybe I even put a little bit of that butter now. That's it, melting around. Now you want to saute it, you know, a couple of times to get a little bit of the fat inside the potato itself. You know, mixing it this way to give it more taste. And after a couple of times, then you don't touch it, you spread it flat, and you keep that on high temperature. You want to cook that probably close to 10 minutes on one side. You flip it like you do a crepe, and then you have to cook it about the same amount of time on the other side. Okay, while this is cooking, we're gonna do the second one, which is a skillet sweet potato. You have yam and sweet potato, I love it. Sometimes I do, we do it with the skin. Today I'm taking the skin off. Because I think there is a fair amount of black spot on it. This is a big one, as you can see. And certainly the yam or sweet potato, I use them a great deal in the fall of course, Thanksgiving and all that in puree, different type of way of doing it. I love those. Those, of course, I've never had that in France. So here we're gonna cut that into about half inch. I'm gonna put some water in there, maybe half a cup of water. The water there is used as a carrier. You know what happened in that it very often we use water as carrier. That is when you saute onion, for example, the recipe tell you saute your onion, chopped onion, don't let them brown, cook them until they are tender too, but not brown. What do you do when you put them in hot oil or hot water? They start browning. So what do you do? You put four, five tablespoons of water, half a cup of water. By the time you can hear it, it's sizzling again, the water has disappeared, the onion are cooked and transparent. Okay. So that's what's going to happen here. I have enough water so that it's going to cook nicely. And after it's cooked, there is no more water. Then I will take the lid off. So a little bit of salt. You can even put a dash of sugar if you want, if you want more caramelization. This will boil and cook about five minutes, then the water will have disappeared. Then you can remove the lid, continue cooking it, turning it so that it browns nicely. This is cooking. At that point, when it's nicely brown, then we can flip it over or you can use a lid, not a lid like that, but a flat one or something flat to turn it upside down and slide it on the other side. I know here it's not brown enough, but I flip it, as you can see, so it starts browning nicely on this side. It needs to cook another 10 minutes. I'll probably will flip it again so that it browned more than that. A bit more oil on top, and that's it. And now we just have to wait and maybe have a glass of wine while we're waiting for the potato to be cooked. You can see that my pomme paillasson, or rusty potato, are cooked. Brown, beautiful and brown on each side. This is totally reduced. There is no more liquid, as you see now, so I can let it brown. The rusty potato, you know, you can serve it as a big crepe, you know. You can 
Serve it like that. You can never go wrong with that. You know what it's very good with? I love that with a slice of salmon. Slice of salmon on top, some sour cream and all that. This is great. That's it. Any type of roast, a steak or whatever, it's gonna go well with it too. My sweet potato now should They are nice and brown. They're certainly very tender now. You can always put, sometimes I put a little bit of honey in it, you know. That, of course, can be done ahead as well. Good. I can arrange the potato on top and maybe a little bit of chives. Set. So, let's see. Set. It's a way of doing it in the skillet, which is faster than in the oven. I can overlap them a little bit here. Okay, this one here. And finally, this one there. Even a little bit of the, the butter which is left. A dash of the green on top. And this is a perfect garnish for your turkey, you know. The Darfin potato and the skillet sweet potato. Here we are. I'm gonna make a green couscous now. I have four different types of herbs. I have basil, tarragon, parsley, chives, and a small clove of garlic. Uh, you can have all the type of herb, of course, that you want. I'm gonna put that into that mini shop here to make kind of a, practically like a green liquid, you know. So now here, I'll put that in there. And I'm using, of course you can use the regular couscous, which does take a while to cook. Oh, this is the instant type of couscous, which is much faster, of course, to cook. And I'm going to liquefy that with some of the water. A cup of couscous with a cup of water. So uh, I'm going to put uh, close to half a cup here to help me liquefy this. Beautiful, I have a tablespoon of butter in there. So I have the butter in there and one cup of couscous. As you can see here, this is an instant couscous. Yeah, one cup. All I want to be, yeah, that's it. All I want to make sure, I have a dash of salt with it, and I want to make sure that I stir it so that the butter itself is going to coat the couscous. And then, now I know it's nice and coated. I'm going to put that green liquid in it. Here we are. And then the extra water, I put about half a cup here, so I'm gonna put about half a cup here of boiling water. That's it. You stir it. You stir it nicely so it takes. Sometimes I put figs, date, and that's it. You want to cover it and let it set for like five minutes at least. And then with a fork, you can, you know, fluff it and you can use it. And this is it. I can see now, you know, that you, as I say, you want to get it fluffy like this with a fork. Beautiful. 
great with a lobster, great with fish. Here we are here. And as I say, one cup of couscous will give you two cups. If anything, if ever you do like five cups of couscous, you don't put five cups of water. Each time you do a cup, I would reduce at least two, three tablespoons of water. Otherwise, it gets a little too wet. And that's it. It's nice and fluffy now. Mm. Very good. And here is my green couscous. I'm going to do a beautiful polenta dish for you today, which is polenta or yellow corn meal or white corn meal or harina de maiz too. It's all the same thing from the corn. And uh, basically your proportion is one to four. You know, so I have a, uh, half a cup of uh, yellow corn meal here, two cups of water. I'm gonna put a dash of salt in there and use the whisk, you know, to sprinkle it in time and stir it as you put it in there because it can lump. In fact, you know what, when I do a lot of uh, polenta like that, like if I have three cups of this, putting it in the water, it tends to lump. So I keep like one and a half cup of water, cold water, I mix it with my polenta, it's all wet, and then I put it in the boiling water and then it dilute. So here it's boiling. As you can see, I'm going to lower the heat to very low and uh, cook it six, seven minutes. During that time, we are going to do a stew of vegetable. And I'm going to have onion in there, I have garlic, I have tomato, I have mushroom, I have corn, anything that I find in my refrigerator. Yeah. Oh, maybe a quarter of a cup of onion. A little bit of uh, oil there. And maybe a little piece of butter with it. Occasionally, you know, on your polenta so it doesn't burn. You will notice that if you really do that ahead, it will thicken anyway and you will have to add water or stock. I mean, I did it with water here. You can do it, of course, with stock as well. Okay, I have my onion here. Your garlic, if you want to do your garlic, hit it on the side like that. Whoop, it goes all over the place. But my wife doesn't let me do that at home, you know. And then you have to cut the end of the stem here all the time as I cut, so that by the time you crack it a little bit, then the skin will come out very easily. Here it is. I'll crush the garlic, and when you do that, remember that your knife is here, your finger is here, so when you use it on the side, you have to clear up the table, like when you slice something. So here I bring it here, down and forward, and that will release the essential oil in there can see that gooey thing. And then now I can rock my knife on top of it and even clean my knife to have it very fine, you know. Okay, here it is. Garlic, onion, I can't live without it. Now look at the mushroom. People say, do I clean up mushroom? Do I wash mushroom? It is not a question of whether you wash it or not. If it's dirty, you wash it. The most important part of it is that when you wash it and you don't wash it ahead, you don't even wipe your mushroom with a wet towel because you take a protective coating and it starts getting soft and all that. But by the time you're ready to use it, put it in water as I did, wash it. As you can see, I have a fair amount of dirt here. Slice it and use it at the last moment. That's the secret of it. So, here we are. We cut them any old way here, very coarsely chopped. Any type of mushroom too. You could have the same type of mushroom, or two or three type. It used to be that there was only, I remember many, many years ago when I came to America, going to the supermarket in New York, it's like 50 years ago, and say, where are the mushrooms? People say, aisle five. That was canned mushroom. There was no fresh mushroom. At that time in New York, you had to go to a specialty store just to get regular white button mushroom like this. Now I go to any supermarket, I have what, six, eight, 10 different types of mushroom. 
Most of them have no taste, but there is about 10 different types of mushroom. Okay. Now here is with my onion. That's more than enough. And my mushrooms are going to give a little bit of moisture, you know, out of it. So I will put corn with it at the last moment. See, I cut the corn like that with a knife. My knife is in that direction, not like this. If you do it like this, and uh, 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 it is difficult. Why? Because you're using one inch from the center of the knife. From that position here, if you do this and you start here and you finish here, then it slide. You know, it slide beautifully. Position of the knife. I have actually much more than I need here with the corn. That's it. And my tomato. You could have other type of vegetable, of course, in there. Usually, during the winter particularly, I use a fair amount of plum tomato. That's about the best one that I can find in the market. Okay. You see, if you have the mushroom as I have here, and you f feel that those mushrooms are not rendering enough water, you can always put two, three tablespoons of water there. See, that polenta is way cooked now. Okay, now let me add tomato. Here I have a little salt in it, pepper. And uh, to finish it up here, I have about half a cup of a good chicken stock. The corn, a lot of different vegetables here. A ragu of vegetable and that ragu of vegetable, you can do it and serve it by itself or as a garnish to a roast or whatever. Let's bring that back to a boil and boil it maybe for a minute or two. I'm gonna use a little bit of chive, so I might as well cut it now to put it at the end. There we are. More than enough. And all I have to do now is to wait for this to finish cooking. I think that I'm going to enjoy a glass of wine in the kitchen. Uh, this is a Chignan Bergeron, this is a wine from Savoie, an area of France that people don't really know for wine. Nothing to do with Burgundy, Bordeaux, even the center of France or the south. This is in the Alps, but uh, I was born not too far from there, so I enjoy that wine. Polenta is cooked. The vegetables are way cooked here also. You want them to have the nice and runny with a fair amount of juice. That's what I put the chicken stock because the polenta is thick, you know. Okay, so here we are. You want a soft polenta like this. And we have plenty of extra vegetable on the side that you want to give. A bit of a shave on top. You could even have some cheese, but I think we're going to serve it this way, the corn polenta with the mushroom ragu. Just remember that the kitchen is the most relaxing place in the home. In my home it is. So cook and relax. Happy cooking. Visit the website at kqed.org slash Jacques Pepin to learn more about Jacques.
You can watch the shows online, view clips of Jacques in the kitchen, print more than 50 recipes, and see photos from behind the scenes. Essential Pepin is the collection of Jacques' favorite recipes from more than 60 years in the kitchen. The book includes all the recipes in the series, along with 600 more, and a searchable DVD. It's $40 plus shipping. To order, call 800-937-5387 or go to the web address below. Or you can order the complete series of all 26 shows on DVD for $39.99 plus shipping. Essential Pepin is made possible by... KitchenAid, for the way it's made. Proudly celebrating 10 years of Cook for the Cure to support the fight against breast cancer. And by C. Donatello Winery. Producing Pinot Noir and Chardonnay from Sonoma's Russian River Valley. C. Donatello Winery is a proud supporter of Jacques Pepin. And by OXO Good Grips. OXO, tools you hold on to. Happy cooking! <laughs>